The lands of the Nez Perce stretched from Oregon to Idaho, but in the 1860s, the federal government seized millions of acres, crowding them into small parts of their former territories. Chief Joseph led the resistance to the colonization of Nez Perce lands, but his people came under fierce attack, and in 1877, he and his followers were defeated. Joseph was sent to the Indian territories of Oklahoma, where he continued to speak out against the crimes of the U.S. government, as he did in a visit to Washington in 1879, which he recalls in this speech. At last I was granted permission to come to Washington and bring my friend Yellow Bull and our interpreter with me. I'm glad I came. I have shaken hands with a good many friends, but there are some things I want to know which no one seems able to explain. I cannot understand how the government sends a man out to fight us, as it did General Miles, and then breaks his words. Such a government has something wrong about it. I cannot understand how so many chiefs are allowed to talk so many different ways and promise so many different things. I have seen the Great Father Chief and many other law chiefs, and they all say they are my friends and that I shall have justice. But while all their mouths talk right, I do not understand why nothing is done for my people. I have heard talk and talk, but nothing is done. Words do not pay for my dead people. They do not pay for my country now overrun by white men. They do not protect my father's grave. They do not pay for my horses and cattle. Good words do not give my children back. Good words will not make good the promise of your war chief, General Miles. Good words will not give my people good health and stop them from dying. Good words will not give my people a home where they can live in peace and take care of themselves. I'm tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick when I remember all the good words and all the broken promises. There has been too much talk by men who had no right to talk. If the white man wants to live in peace with the Indians, he can live in peace. There need be no trouble. Treat all men alike. Give them the same laws. Give them all an even chance to live and grow. All men were made by the same great spirit chief. They are all brothers. If you tie a horse to a stake, do you expect he will grow fat? If you pen an Indian up on a small spot of earth and compel him to stay there, he will not be contented, nor will he grow and prosper. I have asked some of the great white chiefs where they get their authority to say to the Indian that he shall stay in one place while he sees the white men going where they please. They cannot tell me. When I think of our condition, my heart is heavy. I see men of my own race treated as outlaws and driven from country to country or shot down like animal. I only ask of the government to be treated as all other men are treated. We only ask an even chance to live as other men live. We ask to be recognized as men. We ask that the same law shall work alike on all men. If an Indian breaks the law, punish him by the law. If a white man breaks the law, punish him also. Let me be a free man, free to travel, free to stop, free to work, free to trade where I choose, free to choose my own teachers, free to follow my religion of my fathers, free to talk, think, and act for myself, and I will obey every law or submit to the penalty. 
Whenever the white men treat the Indians as they treat each other, then we shall have no more wars. We shall be all alike, brothers of one father and mother, with one sky above us and one country around us and one government for all. Then the great spirit chief who rules above will smile upon this land and sing, send rain to wash out the bloody spots made by brothers' hands upon the face of the earth. 